So the reason I actually come up to talk to you today, the main reason that I'm here, was uh, to ask you uh, about what was going on the other day. You know, why why were they here? Like these uh, quote unquote ecologists. ecologists. Yeah. Uh, and what were they doing? And if it was inert, if it was, you know, why weren't they answering you your question? So, um, I mean, I could honestly, really honestly, about that whole situation. I mean, it was quite quite a disturbance. And I was just talking about this before we came down to talk ourselves. That we were sitting there having coffee yesterday morning, and we you know we we're expecting ecologists on the ground. We we're expecting people to come here. We've had interactions with ecologists before last i think it was last week nine days ago maybe i challenged one of the ecologists and he admitted on camera that they had found new badger sets he, he knew there was wildlife in the hedges but we had been told that bride away was getting cut the next day so we made a challenge and we put that information in and then hs2 one of the managers got really angry and he contacted one of the landowners and told them that he was frustrated by the protesters and they couldn't make progress but that's what we're here for you know and because of that they had to re then do a badger survey they did their badger survey and they found three new sets but they were sets near sets that they'd covered and netted. So if you cover and net a badger set, it's going to dig a new one. Um, so they ended up digging a set right in the middle of a field that is about to be ploughed through by HS2. And again, we recorded it and reported it. And because of that, they now have to do this 21 day survey where they're, they're trying to trace the badges. I mean, and if you read some of the reports, some of the things that they're supposed to do, one of the techniques they use is to actually dye the badger poo. So they feed them a dye. It is inert, apparently. Um, but we don't know that, you know, and when they came here yesterday, they weren't using that technique. They were ramming a broomstick down a hole with something on the end of it. And I'm sorry, but if you're not doing anything suspicious, why not talk about it? Why not explain to me? Why not show me that one litre container that had labelling on it? Why not actually disprove my madness, as people were calling it? And then there was some criticism yesterday that I was too confrontational. Well, I'm sorry, but if you're going to destroy wildlife, I am going to confront you. Morning, everybody. Uh, this is James Hillwood. Ooh. Jones Hillwood in the Wendover Valley. We've had a massive intrusion of people right through our camp. I can count about 12 people so far who have been right through our camp, including these guys who I've not social distancing. We've got footage of you walking up the hedge line, not social distancing, gentlemen. Where have you come from? Can I ask what you're doing with that? Is that, is that poison you're putting down for the public? Do you want to explain to everybody who's watching what you're doing? You're an ecologist here to do a baseline survey. What is this gentleman putting down on the floor? It's not poison. What is it? It's, we're, um, we're just doing um, a survey, a badger survey. Can you stay two metres away from me, please, mate? You're encroaching on my space. Look at this. It's more than two metres. Mate, that is not two metres. That is not two metres, brother. Is metres. This is my home you're encroaching on. Um, this is the place I've been self-isolating for weeks and weeks, and now there's 20 of you in my home. What are you putting down that hole? Do you want to explain yourself so people don't just think you're trying to poison animals? We're not poisoning, honestly. Well, why don't you explain it to me then? Why don't you explain it to everyone that's watching? We're not since, poisoning. Since you've encroached on our home, since you're encroaching on this wildlife's home, why don't you explain to the whole world what you're doing? It'd be quite simple, wouldn't it? Take two seconds. So this gentleman is now all over the top of what we know are semi-active badger sets. He's completely disturbing the ground. He's leaving their scent, scent all over them. What's he doing, mate? He's disturbing, he's disturbing a badger set. That's illegal. He's not disturbing the badger set. He's crawling all over it. He's not disturbing the badger set. He's crawling all over the top of the entrance to a badger set and he's stuffing a stick down there and some kind of chemical. He's not putting a chemical in there. What is it then? We're just undertaking a survey. It's not a chemical. What are you putting down the holes? If, if it's not a problem to the badgers, mate, and you care about ecology, why don't you just tell me what the substance you're putting down those holes is? If it's not going to harm the badgers, if it's not going to harm the environment, why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell us what you're putting down the holes, gentlemen? If it's not a harmful chemical, what's the problem? I was watching you live. And I could see the people going, oh, well, you know, getting all upset with them is not going to change anything. But the thing is, if unless you've been at the point the end and 
something you you believe possibly that like you were saying they were acting very weird uh suspiciously with this stuff they were putting down a live badger sets that mm-hmm. have just been you know dug because they netted the others so you know what's going on you can see they are killing the badgers in your mind in front of you and i was like unless you guys get up there and actually be at the pointy end you're not going to know what it's like to be in that situation and i could see you was getting frustrated Do you know I, I think as well i gave them an opportunity to explain and I, I, I mean this, you know, I, I... A time and time again. Yeah, I asked him for the explanation. I asked him to show me that tub. And actually, after we'd, the whole live stream had gone out, me and one of the other camp members, they were up the top of the forest, and we went and challenged them again, and it was a lot calmer. And we said to them, please, people think you're poisoning the badges. You know, people think you're po- putting poison down those holes. Mitigate that circumstance. Talk for HS2. And the response was dead, you know. And I, I'll be really honest with you, there are other circumstances where they do put poisons down holes um, there's a technique to get rid of moles and other pests um, where they put what is effectively a form of must, uh, mustard gas in pellets down holes and when it reacts with moisture it does kill those animals if hs2 weren't doing anything wrong yesterday all they had to do was speak you know if they wanted to come into this woodland and do a survey all they had to do was come in and speak to us and tell us that's what they were doing because we've had our surveys done we know what's here you know and It's a game of chess sometimes, but what happened yesterday was they came in on force, they brought a security team, the security team walked into our camp where coronavirus, everyone's self-isolating, we have been away from the general public, and he got in my face, he was less than two metres away from me, he tried to stop me walking through the woodland, I've got no right to do that, and behind him were 30 people in orange suits with face masks on, genuinely this is our home, and we thought we were being evicted, and as we challenged that, it was a bunch of ecologists doing surveys on trees, and when I say I weren't doing surveys. No. Okay, let's be let's be honest. I was about to say that. Like when I say surveys, is it, is it paying lip service? Yeah. I think that's the surprise, yeah. Honestly, it? I mean, it's, it's a box ticking exercise, isn't it? They there was fifteen or sixteen so-called ecologists in here yesterday. Keep walking. I want to go up this path. Keep walking. Please keep walking. This is their version of doing a wildlife survey, pointing a camera and recording something on their phone. Who do you work for, mate? Who do you work for? They were supposed to be bird experts. Genuinely, I can't tell you their ages, but they were young. And HS2 have got their own academy, and it was quite obvious these guys hadn't been on the ground before. HS2 it, have got their own academy? Yeah, well, they train engineers and ecologists. Um, and no these conflicts of interest? No, not at all, not at all. Um, so these, these guys are in it, and between them, I counted one video camera and four phones. You've got 15 people working on the ground to survey bat roosts and nests. You can't tell what's in a nest if you're standing on the ground with a video camera. No drones, no elevated sticks for the camera to it. get shots no. of the tree properly. None of it. And actually, if you read the HS2 guidelines for the way they survey woodland, that is not the way they do it. They're just ticking a box because they can now say it happens. And, you know, it's disappointing to think that because, again, these people are ecologists, as they call themselves. If you're an ecologist, you wouldn't be involved in a project that's going to destroy the natural environment. That is not ecology you know that is not the definition of ecology and it was it was shocking to see that and actually that's part of the reason i got a little bit irate because we have climbed these trees like we have actually taken pictures of the birds nests we know there's nesting birds in here and they ignored that it's alive isn't it, isn't it? Yeah, um it now. two weeks ago when they came to do their bat survey they were challenged by some of the camp members and they were writing zeros on their form and what they asked the bat, the bat surveys what zeros meant and they went well there's no roosts in there and one of the camp members actually said but look look right there and the guy went oh we'll make it a three then you know, these guys are just putting numbers on bits of paper and ticking boxes, and that isn't that isn't due process. That isn't, um, and I mean, that's why we're having our surveys done. This will be challenged in court when they cut this down and they destroy the habitat. This will be challenged in court, and we will take it to that level. It's not just about living in tree houses and living on the front lines and having these confrontations. You know, they're battles that are necessary, but that isn't what's going to win the fight. Really, isn't. It needs judicial process. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know another better way to put it, but yeah. No, it does. It needs. But, but that's not. That doesn't mean that it's in. It's not important. Protesting is important because it slows the machine down and it also eats into the profit. Absolutely. Of the corporations, people think, oh, well, this is just going to cost all of us more. Well, that that isn't because of the protesters. That's because the the people that are losing losing money off their profit line 
might want to increase it to get their profit back. Absolutely. And that's what all this is about, really. Oh, it is about that, profit. That was going to be my next question. So, um, what do you think is the main motivation um, for the proponents of HS2? <laughs> my, my instinctive reaction is to say ego, greed, ignorance, and profit. I mean... You look you at. Say, sorry, go, go on. on. No, go on. Would you say capitalism is a driving force for it? Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, the capitalism is a driving force for society nowadays, and you know that's a whole other debate about. But you know, we we live in a capitalist society that isn't benefiting everybody. This project doesn't benefit everybody. HS2 try and claim this is a green project. The government are writing this off as part of the green deal. You know, this isn't a carbon neutral project. You know. For 120 years, right? 120 years. And that's not as if you don't include the rolling stock, yep. I believe. Yeah, absolutely. And like we talk about the budget, £160 billion is the conservative estimate for this project. Actually, with the rolling stock, with the infrastructure, with everything we're talking about, £257 billion. Yeah. Lord Barclay, the guy that reviewed this, said this could be an endless pit of money. We've been in austerity for 10 years. We've killed thousands of people through austerity measures. And now we've got this project that is a vanity project driven by ego. And you know what? It was started by Labour. And even then it wasn't a great idea. And it's been picked up by the Tories and it's been forced forward. And what they're proposing is 10 years out of date. You know, the plan they're proposing isn't in line with modern day technology or standards or none of this project comes together and makes sense for me. And, you know, if we talk about how I feel, I feel like some of this is a, a land grab. They are grabbing land left, right and centre. And what for? You know, what are they going to do with that land? They're going to build houses on it and sell it back to the people it's meant to benefit. Well, it's not benefiting anyone, you know. We're talking about all this money, £32 million a mile at the current judgment, for what, 14 minutes between Birmingham and London that nobody can afford to go on the train. Are they actually going to get their 13 minutes or whatever it is? Because as I understand it, because it's a high-speed train, the, the checks and balances security-wise for people to get on and for luggage and cargo potentially is what they're saying to go on it will actually that process will be longer quite possibly yeah uh, um uh, do you know what yeah i haven't even got into that bit of it yet <laughs> i'm like the sharp end of it but like I, you know and i'll say this actually i'm open about this i don't think that we don't need to be build railways and i think there does need to be some road development in this country and i think we do need to invest in industry but actually we talk about old industry in this country industry is a renewables technology industry industry is working with young people to give them a future in renewables technology so we export that and we become world leaders in that and actually right now the north of england where i've been a youth worker where i've lived i tell you they need a train line and need to connect east to west and the cities need regeneration because we have decimated them by taking away as traditional industries the south of this country i'm sorry but there is a rail network that exists it does work you know if we're talking about 14 minutes what difference is that making between birmingham and london oh, is birmingham just becoming a suburb of london for the rich people is it then going to drive all those people that can't then afford to live there further up north where there's no infrastructure it's who, who do you think is going to use this train if it gets built mm. it Businessman? businessman it's corporation you know that's corporations. what yeah that's what it is it's not i can't see this being about public transport 